Well, if you watched my last video, you know that I was trying to get the attention of our HR manager because I had asked her a number of questions about the mandatory vaccine policy. And it seems that uh, the video I made yesterday did get her attention. Um, so much so that uh, I was invited to have a meeting with her and the fire chief and uh, was told, first I was told that uh, they wanted to thank me and they really appreciate the service that I've provided to the township. So I thought, well, that was great. Um, but then the meeting took a bit of a turn from there. Um, and that's when they told me that they were going to be ending the employment relationship effective immediately. Uh, of course, I asked them why. And uh, they gave me a letter and she actually read from the letter. And uh, certainly it's because of the video that I posted uh, yesterday. And I can read you uh, part of the letter. Um, uh, this, I'll just, uh, the reasons for your termination include, without limitation, your violation of the township's code of conduct for staff and the firefighter code of ethics. On the evening of October 14th, 2021, you posted a video on YouTube in which you openly criticized the township and questioned a recently implemented program. In the video, you appear in front of a fire truck in the fire hall while dressed in your uniform. Your comments misrepresented the program you were criticizing, thereby distributing false information to the public and seemed intended to cast the township in a negative light. You specifically acknowledged you knew that the video could have negative consequences for your employment. Despite your knowledge that the video was inappropriate, you distributed it to the entire fire service and others within the township and on social media, specifically YouTube. So it was, uh, there's a few things in there and I asked her specifically about, um, she says that your comments misrepresented the program you were criticizing. And I specifically asked her, I, uh, I didn't mean to misrepresent the program. And I was curious, like what specifically did I misrepresent? And uh, she suggested that I put my questions in writing and send them to her. Um, and I asked her again, I said, well, we're here now, you put it in the letter, why don't you tell me what specifically um, I misrepresented? Um, and she, I think she said she didn't want to debate, debate me was her question. And I said, well, last time I sent you questions in writing, I was largely ignored. Um, but anyway, so this is interesting. They don't quite say, I, is it possible I signed a code of ethics? I suppose, I don't recall that. Um, they certainly didn't say like chapter and verse, what in the code of ethics I did. Um, they don't really say, I mean, they sort of allude, like they sort of state as a matter of fact that I was in a fire hall, that I was in front of fire trucks, that I was wearing a uniform and those are all true things. Um, I intentionally, when I made the video, I intentionally uh, tried to frame the shot so that none of the logos of my specific fire department or my former fire department, I should say, were in the shot. Um, I certainly wasn't representing the township. I thought it, the video was pretty clear that I was representing my own personal thoughts as a firefighter, um, but my own personal thoughts about their vaccine mandate. So I'm not sure what exactly I contravened. I suspect that what they're really concerned about, and they allude to it here, is that I criticized their policy and that I cast the township in negative light. Um, I don't know that I did that. I thought I did a reasonable job trying to, you know, lay out my arguments as to what my concerns were. Um, but I think ultimately they don't want to be criticized. They don't want to have their authority questioned. Um, they think they're doing the public a great service by requiring all their employees to be vaccinated. And as I said in my original video, perhaps on some level that will increase safety, but I mean, one thing's for sure, they have one fewer firefighters today than they did yesterday. Um, they are recruiting by the way, so if you are interested in being a part-time volunteer firefighter and you have proof of vaccine, um, you can apply. Uh, they spend a lot of money in terms of time and energy training a firefighter uh, to get their certifications before they can go on calls. And unfortunately, I guess uh, they were willing to you know, let go of that investment that they made in me um, and well, start anew. And obviously that's their choice. 
as I alluded to in my earlier video, I knew that this might be a consequence. I assumed, however, that the way that would come about would be that they would increasingly require that I show my proof of vaccination and that I would continue to not show it and that ultimately that would show, uh, that would uh, end up in me losing my job. Uh, I wasn't expecting that they would take issue with the video, but clearly they did. I guess I have hit uh, a sore spot for them or um, uh, clearly I, I touched a nerve as they say. Anyway, that's my update. So I'm now a former firefighter, which is regrettable. Uh, I really did like that job. I was, uh, I wanted to say to my former colleagues, I have spoken to several of them today. I've got lots of encouraging texts and emails. Thank you guys. I appreciate the encouragement and the calls. Um, and one thing I was saying to one of them um, just a little while ago was that I guess my background, oddly enough, is in human resources. Um, but I've traditionally worked in office jobs and it has been a tremendous experience these last four and a half years in the fire service. It has really stretched me as a person. Um, it has challenged me, it is humbling, and I've got tremendous respect for the men and women who serve our communities in the fire service. It is hard work. A lot of it um, is a grind. Um, things are happening in physical space. Uh, it can be a dirty job, a messy job, uh, but it's an important job and the men and women and who do it and who do it well um, give us a tremendous service and I am very thankful for those who continue to serve and again I regret that I'll no longer be able to do that. Um, if and when, um, I don't imagine it would happen anytime soon, but if there's ever a change in leadership at that township or if we get past this pandemic and if ever they were uh, interested in having me back, I would be very open to entertaining that because I, I did enjoy that job and I will miss it. But as my original video said, um, there are things that are more important to me than even safety. And I know that that is a heresy nowadays. Um, and again, I was talking to one of my former brothers in the fire service, and I believe that every firefighter is religious to some degree. And what I mean by that, uh, whether or not they go to church or whether or not they go to mass or adhere to a specific uh, religion, the men and women who work in the fire service believe in something that's bigger than them because for the work and for the money, um, it doesn't make reasonable sense to do the job. But the reason the men and women do that job is because they believe that there are things that are worth risking their lives for. There are things that are more important even than their own safety. And that's things like public service and um, self-sacrifice and ensuring that other people are safe. Um, anyway, I'll leave it there. I just wanted to give an update that I am now a former firefighter and uh, that's my status now. And again, it's regrettable, but um, I am at peace with how things happened. Not the outcome I wanted, but uh, if I could do it again, I think I'd be in the exact same position. Thanks for watching.